Why do we do it? What is it that compels us to cross countries and continents, travelling vast distances into beautiful, unforgiving wilderness, exhausting our time and resources, and sacrificing so much else that life has to offer? What is it that makes these ventures so meaningful? After many months of slow burn anticipation, I finally found myself on the banks of the magnificent rivers of British Columbia, feeling insignificant and humbled by nature, and wondering to myself if I just might have found some answers to these questions. It was late August, early September time. The surroundings were still lush and green, the weather still warm and summery, and I was trying to remember the homework I'd done before the trip. Man, there's heaps of them down there. Look at, look at all that right there. See those? Can you see all those fish down there? Yeah. At this time of year, the salmon return from the ocean to their native rivers to spawn, an arduous ritual that leaves them discoloured and gnarly looking. Exhausted and spent, they finally perish, their rotting carcasses ending up as food for scavengers. Word was, some really good runs of pink salmon were on the cards this year. The Fraser itself was still closed for salmon fishing, and the Vedder was devoid of fish on the day we tried, so we headed instead for the Squamish River, an hour's drive out of Mission. As salmon season had just opened, it was busy as hell down there. Arriving at our chosen stretch, I couldn't believe my eyes. Dozens of fly anglers were lying in the banks, and everywhere I looked, people were hooking up. The pinks had come home, and were obviously here in huge numbers. Colby and Nick wasted no time, and were soon showing me how it's done. Now I've never fly fished in my life, but watching these guys, I couldn't help but be impressed. I understood immediately how people develop a passion for the art of frying a fly, the stripping and twitching, working the flow, the visceral thrill of seeing the aggressive attacks. I wanted to try, but I was a bit apprehensive. Surely this would be a disaster waiting to happen, but Colby assured me the fish would just as readily take a lure, as long as it was pink. Even though I'd be the only one lure fishing, with so many fish being caught, I figured, how hard can it be? You just wanted to get down in front of the face, right? That's when just, they just swipe at it. Oh! 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 Oh my God! Those hooks, man, in the soft mouth. Ooh. Oh man! <laughs> Turns out it wasn't as easy to land these salmon as it looked. Oh! And he's off. A little upstream, Nick was making it look easy. Fly or float, lure or plastic. The guy was hooking up almost every cast, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to just shuffle along a bit closer. Maybe some of that finesse would rub off on me too. Five minutes. Fight like demons. So just grab it like I got it. I'm gonna leave the spoon in its mouth. So we just hold it like this. That's a special fish for me. Is it? First salmon, oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. He smokes, he's beaching himself. <laughs> As with all things, it just takes a little patience and practice to get dialed in. These pinks were averaging just a few pounds, but were seriously tenacious fighters, really giving it their all, using the current to power up and down like fish twice their size, 
often leaping a few feet clear of the water. And sometimes you see them following the lure in close, smashing it right in front of you. Pink salmon may be the smallest of the five salmon species, but by the end of our session, I was quite taken with them. Not only do they give such a good account of themselves when hooked, but they come in all kinds of shapes and colours. Small finned, large finned, torpedoes and humpbacks, chromes, pinks, speckled browns and pearlescent creams, each and every one a peach. Where had the time gone? It felt like we'd barely fished an hour or two, but somehow, five or six hours had passed like that. That bittersweet moment had arrived. It was time to go. British Columbia is a beautiful part of the world. When you get out on the road, you see just how much water you have around you. You have the Pacific Ocean there on the coast, the huge Fraser River, and seemingly endless rivers and tributaries snaking through the wilderness. There are also lakes and ponds dotted around everywhere, so for visiting anglers, it really does feel like the promised land. After the experiences at the Squamish, we continued our search for salmon at a number of other rivers. Unfortunately though, we found them only at places we couldn't fish. The places we could cast a line, stunningly beautiful though they were, were devoid of fish. The waters were shallow and clear, and when the salmon are there, they're usually pretty easy to spot. With the sun high in the sky, mid-afternoon wasn't the best time to have a go, but we figured we'd try and sneak a bass or two instead. I always leave a little bit of slack line on the water. Yeah. You know, it's all riffly on top, like when it lands, it's all kinky. Leave it because then when the straight straightens out, you know you got a fish. Set it, set it, set it, set it. Seems like his mouth. Oh, open up. Let's see that. Not surprisingly, the bass weren't too keen on coming out of their hidey holes for us. But there was one last spot to have a go at. So when at first you don't succeed, you just have to go and try your luck elsewhere. There you go. That's nice. Along with luck, timing plays a huge part in a successful fishing trip. Hitting it just right for the pink salmon runs not only led to that great day on the Squamish, it also seemed to have fired up the sturgeon, who must have been feasting on the huge influx of salmon into the Fraser. I'd already been lucky enough to land several real giants over the previous few days, but when you're on a roll, you're on a roll. Fun break? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that made for a pretty cool review, though. <laughs> Well done, boy. <laughs> oh, whoa. Is that your fish? Yep. Yeah. Holy smoke. were getting picked up straight away almost every cast. Heads, strips, you name it, they were smashing everything. Bites on two, three rods, two fish on at once. There was a feeding frenzy going on down there. Between the three of us, we could hardly keep up. stars align and everything falls into place. This trip got off to a terrible start and almost didn't happen at all, but it turned out to be one of my most memorable. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. We do it because life's meant for adventures, because we feel at home in the great outdoors, because it stirs our passion and makes our blood race. We do it because it's what makes us feel most alive. <laughs> 